Hey, this is Tony with Salt Strong, and in this video, we're going to be doing a comparison and sort of an analysis of a loop knot versus a snug knot when using soft plastic lures. So the two lures that you're going to see in this video, I have underwater footage comparing the two and how they react underwater based on the type of knot uh, you're using is going to be a five inch jerk shad, which is our Alabama Leprechaun uh, soft plastic jerk shad and also the Slam Shady 2.0, which is a paddle tail. So two different types of lures. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the action is underwater based on the type of knot that you are using. So first up is the jerk shad with a snug knot. The knot that I was using was a trilene knot and the knot is snug to the eye of the hook. Now as you're going to notice in this footage when I'm retrieving the jerk shad doing a twitching retrieve, the jerk shad sort of just bounces up and down casually. It doesn't really dance uh, a lot which is what you want to get out of a jerk shad. You know that type of bait has a really erratic action when retrieved properly but as you can see that knot that is snug is sort of hindering that action of the lure and just causing it to bounce up and down as opposed to having a you know erratic dancing motion and you're going to see that in the comparison to using a loop knot which is what we have here as you can see the loop that is formed does not restrict the eye of the hook or the lure as you're moving it through the water and right off the bat as I start retrieving this lure doing the same retrieve a twitching and a pause retrieve the lure just tends to have more freedom of motion you know as you can tell it darts up and down side to side loops around at times and even you know goes backwards in some instances so definitely a lot more freedom of motion when you're using a loop knot compared to a snug knot when using jerk shad style lures and next up we have paddle tail lures first I'm going to be showing using a snug knot and two different types of retrieves, a straight retrieve and then a bouncing erratic type of retrieve. So with the straightforward retrieve with a snug knot, you still have a little bit of wobble on the lure there. It doesn't really affect the action much. Now with a bouncing retrieve, it does restrict that lure a little bit. I mean, the tail actually restricts the lure the most because that's going to keep the lure going straight as opposed to a jerk shad that has a split tail and allows the lure to dive and dart. But for the most part, snug knot is going to give that lure more of a straight bounce as opposed to more of a side to side bounce. And then lastly, the paddle tail using a loop knot. Again, I'm going to show a straight steady retrieve and then a bouncing retrieve. So as far as a straight steady retrieve, you know, it still has a good amount of wobble and play in it. I uh, really didn't see too much of a difference in comparison to using a snug knot with that straight retrieve. And it's more with the bouncing retrieve that I saw more of a difference. It wasn't much, but it was a little bit of a difference because the lure, again, just like the jerk shad, it tends to, you know, go in different directions as it falls because it has a little bit more freedom of motion. As that tail's kicking, it has more freedom as it falls, so it may, you know, fall down to the side, may spin a little bit, may even go backwards. So that was the real only advantage I saw when using a loop knot compared to a snug knot when using a paddle tail. So an overall conclusion, just based on watching this footage, you know, I definitely learned a lot uh, watching this. Hopefully you guys did too, but when using a jerk shed, you know, a lure that naturally has a darting action, you want to maximize that action and use a loop knot. When it comes to using paddle tail lures, because the tail of a paddle tail restricts the lure, you know, from the very start, just because of the resistance on the tail, it's going to cause that lure to go straight, whether you're bouncing it or retrieving it in a straight, steady reel. You can get away with using either a loop knot or a uh, knot that's snug to the eye of the lure. I prefer to use loop knots on everything just because it's a little extra advantage and you don't have to change knots if you happen to change lures. You know, the loop knot definitely won't hurt anything if you are choosing to use that over a knot that is snug to the eye of the lure. Also, one more thing that's going to be very important to be aware of is that a you know, a loop knot is going to be weaker than a snug knot. So if you're looking for strength over, you know, performance or action to give to your lure, then you're definitely going to want to go with a snug knot over a loop knot. Now, even though lure presentation is very important to get fish to bite, what's going to be more important is actually locating fish. You know, if you're having a tough time out there on the water struggling to find fish, Highly recommend joining our Salt Strong Insider Club where we guarantee you'll start catching more fish in less time. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. 
And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America, especially if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it because we actually guarantee that you'll start catching more inshore fish while saving time and money. We do this through premium education, our exclusive insider fishing community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, we hope to see you again soon.